Yeah, they won. They won. They won. sleeping except me and McCoy which is outside we're leaving Lake Fork Marina right now headed to Santee Cooper so I want to say a huge shout out to Lake Fork Marina we rented this house here on the property it's called the Gunter's house and again guys um, if you come to Lake Fork which you need to obviously for <laughs> you saw why um, stay at Lake Fork Marina good people good tackle shop good restaurant Everything you need right here, it's first class. Chloe's ready to go. Morning, morning. <clears throat> oh, 16 hour drive to Santee Cooper for the second Bassmaster Open. I have to fish three of them this year because we won the first one. And when you win the first one, you automatically get an invite qualification for the 2025, not this year, 25, Bassmasters Classic. So I'm fishing with a free golden ticket this year, which is awesome. What a blessing, you know, because the first two tournaments have not quite gone where I wanted them to go. And uh, I think I'm more disappointed in the fact that there's two fantastic lakes that I didn't get to fish day three or day four on because, I mean, there's gonna be 10 people don't you think 10 is going to get a century belt? 100% all 10 people. Which is unbelievable. It's the best fishing I've ever seen as far as the amount of big ones being caught. And what's crazy is how tough the tournament felt like it was going to be based on practice. But anyways, we'll get into all that. We're going to get on the road. It's 4.50 now. And uh, Sandy Cooper, here we come. Okay. Oh my gosh. Dude. Yep, we're at Bass Pro. We have to go in there and get some stuff. So here's the deal. I've had some bad tournaments over the years. As a professional angler, you're gonna have them. I've fished like 200 events, okay? I've won nine. So it's pretty good odds, believe it or not. So I can't complain, but it still stings. Every time, that I don't do well in a tournament, it stings. And I should be more consistent. Can I win every tournament? I know. But should I be getting a check every tournament? I feel like I should. Should I be making the cut every tournament? I feel like I should. So, again, they all sting separately, individually. They all, but this this one, and we're gonna talk about it again. I haven't really, I'm, it's, it's right here in my throat. Like literally want to just throw it up of some things that I overlooked there's some major lessons in this this one stings this one stings more than than any of them lately because I was on them like literally on them so now we got to go in here and stock up on uh, some bandito bugs I'm down to like I'm down to like a pack so hopefully they have some Bought a rod. Bought. Do we, I bought too much stuff. I don't know what the problem is here. 
bad. I needed bandito bugs. It's kind of ridiculous. I could have called them to just have them shipped, but. And then the rods, the for Santee, for skipping uh, cypress trees, you really need a medium heavy. A seven foot or seven three medium heavy is probably the best option. You get a medium action rod. It's too light. I got my butt kicked a few years back. That's perfect right there because I'm gonna put like probably 12 pound leader on. Big giant bass coming out of the tree. What's that? What's that? Yeah, this is the spot here. But if you can put four boats in here, so if I pull forward, and then my boat's here, and then someone backs into this one, and then do the same on that side, you can put four boats. Hmm. That'll work. You can sit out here at night and rip tackle. Why do you suck so bad? Catch 20, 43. Catch 43, nope. Make a check. Yeah, yeah I know. Hmm. I had you on my fantasy team, by the way. So. Thanks for sucking so bad. on the fantasy team, too. <laughs> Dude, that was ridiculous. I don't even know how to put it into words. Like, the stories are just unbelievable. I mean, what uh, Matt and I were talking about, there'll be 10 century belts. If there was, if the top 30 went tomorrow, if, if that mm -hmm. was the case, 20 would go down. Yeah. 21. Yeah. There were 21 guys that would have had a century belt yeah. if they fished tomorrow. Yeah. The only problem with catching that big, it, it skews reality. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, no, it was pretty impressive. No, I know, but like, <laughs> but no, when someone goes to a lake in a few, in a month or two, and they catch these 20 pound bags, people are gonna be the fans, the general fans are gonna be like, that, that really don't follow the sport, are gonna be like, yeah, I mean that's that's terrible. What's wrong with these people? Why can't those guys? Why, what's wrong with these guys? They suck now. Yeah, they don't even know. To Sabine next week. Correct. <laughs> like when we go to Smith Lake in June. And we catch like 11 pounds is leading the tournament after day one. And they're going to be like, huh? Yeah. The fans are going to be like, they're not going to get it. <laughs> it you, know, you saw 72 underneath that shade over there. Well, I hooked yourself three times. <laughs> yeah, no, I had to do the line trick on myself twice, both on my thumb and my little toe. In about an hour oh span. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was a good time. How many beers were you By yourself? yourself? <laughs> he was yeah. six beers in. He was six yeah. beers in. <laughs> He's six beers in. I stepped on a jerk. I pulled one out of my thumb, and then I stepped on a jerk bait Ooh. like half an hour later. <laughs> I heard a story years ago, and I don't know who it was, but they were talking about being like on, it was like Berber carpet, and I guess there were some hooks or like a lure or something there, and they were walking through in the middle of the night, and they, and they stepped on it, like squarely stepped on it, and it hooked in the bottom of their foot, and it's in the carpet. And they're stuck. And it's in the middle of the night. And they're like, I, I want to say maybe they were even by themselves or something. Like, it was like horrific. Like, they had to wait for a long time and they couldn't move. Like, there's no phone in your hand. Like, you're stuck to the carpet and you can't get it out. Nope. You know what my biggest fear is? <laughs> Sitting on a treble hook and it goes into the boat seat and then it's stuck in your butt and then you're stuck on the seat. Like, what would be the game plan there? So I kind of had a similar situation, but it wasn't on my butt. It was in my calf. Yeah. I had one that... I always kept baits like right there where my step was. I had a jerk bait wrap up under behind my knee, and I didn't realize it. And I like sat down real fast, and as soon as I sat down, the the hook drove into my calf, and it was hooked into the seat at the same time. And I was like, oh. I don't know what to do. And I finally just went ripped my leg down and ripped the hook out of my leg. Mm. And yeah, it was bad though. Like it was gross. I mean, like blood was coming all around my calf and stuff. Terrible. Only, but I can't imagine on your butt, though, because I bet that would hurt so bad. The only bad one I ever had was at Lake of the Ozarks with a whopper flopper. Set the hook, and it came and stuck between my flip-flop, the big toe, and the next toe. Oh. It was just stuck right there. And I was sitting there, I was like going, how am I going to get this out? How am I going to get this out? The boat of guys coming by, and they're like, man, you okay? I'm like, I'm all right, man. I said, uh, I got a hook in my foot. The guy's like, oh, I can get it out. Just jumps off the boat. Like, jumps off the boat and in the water, and he gets down, he looks at my toe, and he goes, oh, I can't do that, man. I can't do that. So I had to cut my flip-flop no and do this 
get the you know line. get the line out and freaking pull it out just myself. Just note to self though, don't ever let ever and I'll repeat, don't ever let Scott do the line trick on you. Huh? Why is that? <laughs> because he tried to do it on me no. at Sam Raven. <laughs> yeah. And Did it come out? Yeah, the third try. <laughs> Yeah, because you didn't hold your thumb down. Thumb. No, you didn't hold your finger down. You, well, first of all, we were like this, and so when I yanked it, your finger curled up. <laughs> that's not gonna work. So that was like that's a bad idea. So then we put it like we had you had to hold your finger down, and then it finally came out. But oh, was, so was he tough about it? Yeah, he, he, he's, but it was bad because we we put it down like that, and I was like, "Are you ready?" And when I it, it just rolled his finger back, <laughs> Dude, it hurts and I'm so like, bad. "Oh my god!" He had to put a flipping hook through my thumbnail last week. <laughs> oh yeah, I had to. Drain and his I was not y'all are killing me with this stuff. <laughs> See, look, look at that thumbnail. He smashed what? it in the jack plate, and so I had to. Drain I was trying to take so my jack plate on the they did put like a governor on it yeah. so it doesn't go up, so I still have. For a year and a half, I've had the uh, wood block, yeah. and I accidentally hit down when my thumb was behind it. So I literally like smashed it, and then it turned black. And Andrew was like, "Oh, we gotta pop that." Ah, you get a hot look. So they tried like tried Frank has the had the needles, needles. <laughs> and the needles didn't work. Okay. So then <laughs> Andrew went and got a five off flipping hook and stuck it in there, and it worked. Yeah, but I was not. A, Tough yeah, about that's, that's it. I got video. It was, he was not tough about it. I thought I, was, you, I thought he was gonna pass out. Honestly, I thought. I thought, I thought my weird coming out. in the Forcewood Cup at Lanier. I was in the finals, and it was my marshal. Well, I guess he wasn't coming. He was just a marshal. He was just sitting there, and he got a, his hand stuck in my big swim bait. And I, um, I'm like, all right, I can get it out. And he was sitting there. Everything was pretty normal. And I was like, I need to get this hook off the split ring first because there's all these other hooks. If I yank it, it's going to slam into your hand in a weird way and you get more of them. So I get side cutters. I had to borrow some side cutters from like a boat watching me fish. And so doing all this, the guy got all worked up over it, I guess. And I got the thing off finally. It was kind of hurting him getting the hook off, you know, or the split ring off. He finally got it off. And then, dude, he just, he just passed out. But I thought he died because he started <laughs> exhaling. He started exhaling like air. Did he just died. He, he went. He went. <laughs> <laughs> and, and dude, he was all hunched over, and I'm like, "Oh my god!" And I was getting ready to yank it at the time, so I just went ahead and yanked it out. And I'm like, "Surely he's passed out." But then he was just kept gurgling, and I was like, "Maybe he had a heart attack." Like, holy crap! So I'm like, "Dude, are you okay?" I wake him up. Finally, he wakes up. You know, he never he never stood up the rest of the day. He just sat there like white as a sheet, man, just freaked out. But it came out. He didn't even know it was out. Like for like ten minutes, he was just sitting there like in shock but i thought he was dead i thought he was dying dude i was like oh my gosh this cannot be happening do right i now. keep fishing or what <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> what do i do here all right guys so tomorrow morning we're gonna get up early santee cooper here we come i like this lake it's a fits my style pretty well it's a lot of like the same stuff we've been doing these boys are wide open but i'm gonna finish getting this tackle rigged up Get a, get wacky worms, get some chatter baits, all my stuff geared up for tomorrow. Hit it hard. Who was stomping through that? That was Matt. Did you hear? Did you hear? Was he leave? Yeah, he's gone. <laughs> so Andrew and them already on the water. What? What's he sleeping for? He's probably gonna talk about one. Bang on the door, dude. Come on. Wakey, wakey! Wakey, wakey! Come on, man. We gotta go. This isn't no kind of South Carolina fishing vacation. This is, the, this is the EQs, boy. You got work to do. <laughs> Come on, what are y'all sleeping for, y'all bunch of punks? <laughs> Come on, man. What's wrong with y'all? That's how we do it around here. <laughs> this is awesome. That's how we used to wake up every morning. So, um, so there's a couple things to consider. Sight fishing does play a big factor in possibly winning. Mm -hmm. Drew Cook won sight fishing. Um, so that could definitely happen, especially early like this, good weather. I mean, this things, these things could come hard, dude. I mean, they could hit the bank. Paulnick 
won in the fall, but he came close to winning the other couple times fishing brush piles in like Wabu and the other creek. I don't know where any of those brush piles are, but they're not that hard to find. Obviously, yeah. just scope around and find them. Jerk baits, you know, bigger jerk baits too. Not like you're just a regular mega bass, but like the bigger ones. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then the lower lake supposedly goes later than the upper lake. Upper lake meaning this lake, but even upper lake meaning swamp and jacks spawn first. Yeah. So the backwater ponds will play as well. I've never really caught them in there, but some of the ones over on the other side of the lake, there's little canals and stuff like that. There's there's always fish in there. I've never seen any crazy deals, but you can start bouncing in and out a lot of these little little coves and stuff up and down the lake, little short pockets that, you know, mile long. You can go in there, there's always three or four fish in every one of those. I mean, <clears throat> Canterbury's always sight fished here, and he's always bopping in those things and finding four or five pounders all the time. Stage on the same trees, and like, if you know those little magic trees that they move in and out off of, or they spawn off of, like big ones spawn on, they, it's where they catch them all the time. Yeah. But, I'm excited about this tournament, believe it or not. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, man, you want Okeechobee? Now you can just, like, just show up at the next two events and just relax. And I'm here to win. I'm here to win. In my mind, it's like, you know, I've only got one opportunity to win back-to-back -back Bassmaster Opens in my life right now. So I might as well put forth every bit of effort I have. I learned a valuable lesson this last week, and I'm I'm going to try to do it different this this week. So it's going to be about thinking and about formulating a plan. It was a, just a bad mistake I made last week, where I just was I was just clueless, and I just didn't have a plan. When you don't have a plan, you miss major things. So, anyways, I'm excited about being here, Clarendon Club. Uh, awesome place here, guys. If you if you all ever come here for an event, let's say you have a a wedding, if you have a, a function going on, maybe you have a big trip with a bunch of people, you need a place to stay. Let me check this place out, guys. Look at this. So you've got all of our rooms right there. That's the that's the, the house. With, I don't know, five or six bedrooms, a bunch of beds. You've got another facility over here which we've never used. There's more beds over there. Private property private pond nice barn here they've got bar boat parking over there as well so tons of cool <clears throat> things here at this place so the Clarity Club is awesome and they, ha they actually have memberships so they have duck hunting memberships and deer hunting memberships and they have a private lake not this one but there's another one on the other side of the property that we film TV shows in every time we've been here and it's fantastic so if you want more information about a great place to hunt, duck hunt, deer hunt, stuff like that. Here in Clarendon County, South Carolina, right here. Santee's right over those trees. Check out the Clarendon Club. We'll drop a link in the description, but really cool place. So today, I'm going to run down the lake. I'm going to stop a few times and check a few things, but I'm going to try to find fish off the bank a little bit. I'm going to try to find fish in brush piles. I'm going to try to find fish on stumps off the bank see what we can come up with something special there's 200 and something boats so you have to separate yourself a little bit now sight fishing could be a big player but it's hard to win sight fishing here if I can find fish on trees like Luke Palmer did special trees that have a big group of fish moving in anyways that's what we're gonna do guys today's all about finding some offshore stuff so let's go Santee Cooper here we come going on everybody I'm excited I'm so excited you know why first of all it's a cool video second of all I'm going to the Keys this weekend with the boat do some fishing that's awesome and third helix sleep is sponsoring this video and that's amazing as well so, you know I've been using the helix mattresses uh, for over over a year now and I've done several videos talking about them 
and just want to quickly tell you about Helix. You know, look, first of all, let's just break it down. There's a million mattresses out there to choose from. Uh, the reason I chose Helix and the reason I like Helix, number one, I have them not only here at my house, we have them at the place in Alabama and we have them down the Keys. And the, and the common theme that I get from all the people that stay with us when we go on vacation is how great their sleep was. They always say, man, that mattress is amazing. And I'm always like, yeah, it's a Helix and blah, blah, blah. And I tell them about it and they, a lot of people have gone out and bought them. Well, Helix is special because here's why. Forget going to the mattress store like you used to have to go. Pick out a mattress, schedule some dude to come to your house and put it in. Literally with Helix, it's so easy. It's literally a one-two process. You get online on Helix Sleep, you take the sleep quiz. You go in there, you type in how you like to sleep, all these different preferences, and it's gonna suggest the mattress for you. Firmness and all these different things. And here's the best part, it shows up to your doorstep. It's shipped right to your house and it comes in a box. I have no idea, like seriously, when they, the, the king size mattress came in a box, it was this big and this wide, I opened it up and it poof, king size mattress. And it's an amazing, amazing mattress, guys. So Helix is hooking you guys up watching this video for a Memorial Day sale. This thing's gonna extend for a little bit as well, so check it out, guys. 30% off on the Elite and Lux mattresses two free pillows you're gonna get, and an additional 25% off site-wide. So all you have to do is go to helixsleep.com forward slash Scott Martin to take advantage of this awesome sale. And again, guys, there's not a better mattress out there in my opinion. A, it's proven, I love it. Everybody that stayed at our house loves it. And here's the best part about it. You get a 100 night sleep trial, I meaning you can test out the mattress for 100 nights. If you have any issues, you contact Helix, they're gonna solve that problem. Number two, 10 year warranty on these mattresses, which is awesome, okay? So there's not a better deal out there right now, guys. Check out Helix, take the sleep quiz, see what mattress fits you, and take advantage of these sales, and enjoy the rest of this video, guys. We'll see you. to do is try to find some brush piles and stuff leading into these these flats but also I think there's some grass here like a lot of it I see some hydrilla floating right there Good. Yeah, I think there's grass here. Like a lot of it. So, it's an interesting little deal. Spawn action. Okay. I've not made my mind up yet. I think they're like spawning. Great. I think they're just kind of hanging around the trees. Which is fine, but I think we'll probably start spawning on the turf. With the water warming up. It's 58. The sun's going to pop out tomorrow. These fish will start spawning. This actually might line up really well.
the, after this trip, this will be 20, like 21 days of fishing in a row. And I feel good. I, I feel great, actually. Not that I would want to do 40 days, but I could do 40 days. I don't feel tired or... I mean, to me, it's just fun. It's a marathon, but I actually enjoy it. I hate being away from my family. That's why I wouldn't want to do it, but physically and mentally I can do it, which is good. You know, losing that weight, keeping it off like I have, not eating bad, it's just really done wonders for me mentally and physically, obviously, because, I mean, man, it was just tough. I mean, getting up out of the seat every five seconds, fishing and standing there, getting tired, my back was hurting, and I'm just light on my feet now. Uh... So, I just feel good. I'm really thankful that I was able to lose that weight. It, it hasn't been necessarily easy. But, like today, I've had three of those. That's 90 grams of protein. Protein is very important. I had a couple packs of crackers and some beef jerky. And I'll eat a normal dinner tonight. Try to keep my calories about 2,000. Try to get my protein around 200 and try to keep my carbs as low as possible. But, you know, my calorie intake probably is 2,000 or less on tournament, on practice days and tournament days, because I just don't eat a lot. Well, we did some evaluating today. We evaluated some things. Evaluation. It was good evaluating. We eliminated some areas. And that's it. I had some bites. I'm starting to see opportunities of things. So we'll see how it all goes tomorrow and the next day. So a lot's going to change. I think these fish are going to lock pretty tight on these trees. Uh, cheese on top. Okay. Well, you know that water's a little more muddy. So muddier than I've ever seen, or stained, I should say. A lot of times when the water gets stained, you know, black and blue's good, but even things with like a little brighter blue, I found these. You know, I'm just gonna keep flipping the bandito bug, and I actually uh, put some dipping down. That blue is pretty good. That black and blue, that blue sapphire. So I have some different things that we're gonna try tomorrow. Um, really, just gotta get in a little rhythm and find several areas that have some good bites. On. And the good thing is. Once you find those areas, I think they're gonna get better as the week goes on, because there's a warming trend and sun coming out, these fish are gonna start flooding the bank over the next couple of days, for sure. So, it could get really, it could really turn into a fun bite. It was really disappointing though, to see that lower lake so muddy. Really kind of a, kind of a messed up view. So, it's gonna make this lake fish a little bit smaller. We've got a lot of rain coming in on Wednesday, so that's probably gonna blow the swamp up. That's what got me a few years back. It's rain and blew the swamp out. So, uh, I'm not sure I'm going to go there tomorrow at all. I'm going to wait probably till Wednesday. And for some reason, they changed the weather forecast and it doesn't rain. Then I'll go to the, go to the swamp. But uh, that's it. We're going to get up in the morning and do it again. we got a couple more days of practice. We're going to have some fun in this one. Did you notice after I got the phone with you that the trees without grass had the bites? Or did you start? Yeah, no, I didn't notice it. So what I started noticing is like, I'd get in like, cause I really started paying attention to it like hardcore. 
like I'd get in areas where the grass was real, real thick around the trees, and then I'd get in like little, like I'd watch my little two D, mm-hmm. and it would just grass would just, mm-hmm. and then I'd I'd get a bite or two. Mm-hmm. But even then, like I, I fished a bunch that didn't have grass on them, oh, yeah. didn't catch them either. But yeah. it did seem like the trees that were like on the inside edge of the grass, where there was like, because there some of those outside trees would have grass all around them. Yeah, there was a grass line on the outside. Yeah, and then like once you got on the inside grass line, yeah, on those trees, I got bit. Yeah, but I didn't get a lot. You know, I mean, I just didn't get a lot of bites. Period. You well, know, like, you get, what 10, 15 bites? Eleven. At eleven. Not bad. But but that was two of us, and now like three of them were like babies. Like, but and what I did realize is if I go too shallow on the trees, is when I start catching these. Mm-hmm. And then I don't know what the other ones were. I might just send them to Oh, little rain coming in on Wednesday. It's gonna muddy up some stuff. So we have to be mindful of that. One thing about fishing is that you have to constantly evaluate the weather and make good decisions based on that because. Perfect example of what happened to me here the first time. I was catching them really good in the swamp. Canterbury and I both were catching them good in the swamp. And rain came the night of day before the tournament and blew the swamp out. And out of everyone up there, which was probably 30 boats, good fishermen too, they all did terrible. And they all talked about how great the fishing was and how they didn't catch them at all. And so it's just amazing how rain and a flood like that can completely shut down the opportunity to catch a bass. It's a little foggy this morning. The sun's supposed to pop out later today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run up north to here can't really see in the swamp or a jack slough much anyway so we'll fish up there for a few hours this morning half a day or whatever and then uh, sun will be out and then we'll start running running our stuff south give time for those fish on those trees to kind of set up a little bit I think they're really gonna set up on those trees pretty well I think it's gonna be a, a pretty good gonna be a good tournament it's gonna take a lot of weight to win I think 22 to 25 pounds a day to pull off the victory on this deal. But um, the thing about this lake is that it's all in sections. Like it's different areas kind of go off at different times. So we just have to find that little hot spot. So yesterday we did a little sampling of kind of what I wanted to see and kind of evaluate. And that made, made some observations. I haven't made my mind up, but made, made some observations. So that's what today is. Today's Monday. We've got all day today, all day tomorrow. And then uh, Wednesday may be a wash just because of the rain, but let's go. All right. Let's see what we can find up here, guys. This is the area called the Swamp. Jack Slough, exactly, but it's a big area. Water's down. Again, I noticed it yesterday. Water's down quite a bit, so that's going to dictate a little bit on real specific what trees they're on, I think. There's also a little bit more grass this year, which is interesting. The water in here looks great though. Looks really good. Water temperature is not as warm as I was thinking it would be. So, I don't know. It's just kind of a, I'm narrowing it down to a couple sections of the, of the lake, which is an interesting, interesting deal, you know? The problem is, 
if this place is going to fish small like this because a couple places aren't happening that means it's going to fish really crowded you know you got the lower lakes kind of out of the question as far as sight fishing and some of the things like that down there but that still might be the best option just find some good stuff down there and you'll have it your you'll have a little bit more room down there i think just going around flipping trees are the same trees everyone's going to flip that's the problem in these opens you have you know five days of practice so everybody's going around setting the hook shaking them off just pestering them so by the time the tournament rolls fish are a lot harder to get to commit they're going to be throwing cheddar bait i don't think these fish are spawning in the hole up here chunk of chatterbait covering some water. Chatterbait's a great pre-spawn lure. It covers the water pretty quickly as well. Oh boy, look at that big bed. That's encouraging. It's very encouraging. There's a fish coming back to the... Woohoo. Yes, sir. You find one, you're going to find more. Fish is back on the bed. Hmm. It's 
lake, this lake is kind of frustrating, dude. To be honest with you. I'm not making great decisions on where I need to be. And what's crazy is that there might be a way to catch them offshore like Jacob Wheeler did. And I can't, for the life of me, figure out how to do that. I've looked around a little bit. I can't even find anything off there. I mean, I know he's... It looks like he was fishing brush piles or something to that effect. I've looked around at some of these little drains and ditches just to try to find something, you know? And I haven't. Got all day tomorrow to fine tune the tree bite. I mean, that's if all else fails, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get out there where I fished before, but I need to try some new areas tomorrow. camera in my face after a long day like today. I'm just tired. I'm tired. I, I need, to, we need to change our ways, man. We just need to change our ways. We gotta figure out how, like, we gotta get up different. We gotta, like, when I go, when, when in my mind, I'm like, I need to go left when I think I'm gonna need to go right. I need to do opposite. Do opposite it, of what you think? It's the opposite right? of what I absolutely need to do opposite. So if I think something, I just do the opposite of what I just thought, it should work great. We're on the opposite pattern. Pretty sure that's how I need to start fishing. My brain is like either that or I just used up all my good fishing fortune two weeks ago. Which I have to say, if I never catch another bass in my life, it was, it was almost worth it, you know. So brutal. I don't know what to say, you know. Like I was just saying, I was just telling everybody that it's like it reminds me of fork. Like I thought it was tough in practice, and of course, everybody smash them. They will smash them here. He goes, I never had a bite today. I no. go, I didn't either. At around like, 11, I decided that the first one that bit, I was gonna just give him the beans. If you wanna go uh, to Moultrie, I got a pickle hole for you. <laughs> yeah. I probably could anyway, corn eel. At 11, I decided I was gonna give him the beans, and then by three, when I hadn't had a bite, I was like, I guess that's a poor game plan. Isn't that crazy? I think they're moving. They all move. Yeah. I pulled into a pocket today. I saw four fish between three and a half and six pounds. But they were sitting like that far in the surface. Yeah. I talked to four buddies we combined for one buddy. Mm, that's perfect. At least yeah, for me. Yeah, well, I mean, well, they're so thin if you they'll, cook it any longer. Yeah, they'll cook a little bit more too. Mm -hmm. What are we having for dinner? What's dinner? Special steak right here. That's what it is. Good morning, Dallas. Another day on the pond. Let's see if we can't figure out something today. We finally got some good weather. Sun's out. Should be good. These fish, I believe, are going to be making a big move. Transition, let me just say that. When I say transition, it means doesn't mean I necessarily know exactly what they're transitioning to. We know they're going to spawn, right? We know they're just getting closer and closer to the spawn. I'm not sure we're going to hit this tournament exactly. It's crazy based on what I've seen so far, but it could. It could turn into like, oh my gosh, they're spawning everywhere. Okay. 
but we've got to figure out something today. Tomorrow we've got some weather coming in. Not sure we're going to get much done tomorrow if it's thunderstorms and all that kind of stuff, but <clears throat> it's a half a day basically is what it is. So we've got to figure it out today. I've got an idea of what I need to be focusing on. You know, again, I think the trick is going to be finding those special trees. And when I say special trees, the trees that are just a little bit deeper, the trees that don't have as much grass around them. You know, there's just some things you have to look for that uh, that make that tree really good. And, you know, when you're a local or you're from here or you've been here a bunch, you kind of understand where those trees are. And I know where a few are, but I've never been here when it's this low, so I think it's more important. But that being said, I think once you find that special tree, it's more special every day because more fish move to it, etc. cetera. Um, something else I'm going to look for today is some sight fish. And the other thing I'm going to look for is a pressure point or a funnel point. One of the things that we learned from Fork was that guys that sat at, at those little bass highways, like those little transition areas, those little funnels, those bass were coming in to that area and those guys caught them every single day coming right by them. So I've got an idea where a couple of those places are and I'm going to look, look at that this morning as well. So, you know, a lot of people said, oh man, you've won the first one and all you got to do is show up for these next two. And that's just not how I roll. Far from being able to win this tournament, that's a fact. But am I trying to win this tournament? Absolutely. Absolutely. I got to make up some ground for the disastrous two tournaments in uh, Texas that we had. So that being said, let's get after it, guys. Back where pond that we're in right now, back this creek. Water just is funky, man. I guess they had a lot of rain a couple weeks ago that just really changed the dynamics of this lake for a little bit. And this time of the year, when you get stained water, it seems like the water's lower. I'm sure they're pumping a lot out of here to get it pushed through the system. It's dropped the water. You get all that going on, it, it really slows the spawn down quite a bit, I think. So I don't like it. We don't have time to sit here. I just don't think this is it. But it was worth a shot. some beds. Oh yeah, I can see bottom good here. Oh yeah, it's good. Good, good, good. There's one. What's up? Good morning, good morning, sir. How you doing, man? Good. Mr. Scott Clark. What's up, dude? Great, day. I didn't know y'all had a big tournament down this way. Yeah, we've got the open here, the bass open. Heck yeah. Finding any? Uh, it's been a little tough, but they're starting to move up now. That's why I'm checking right now. Yeah, thank you, man. Hey, if you cut back through here and have a moment, I'd love to get you autograph from my son. Oh, yeah, you got a pen handy? I don't want to hold you up, but I know. That's all right. I'll do it right now. What's your name? 
Nice to meet you. Yes, sir. You too. All right, buddy. Let me see what I got here. I don't want to keep you or anything. There you go, man. I love that. Thank you. You're welcome. You staying at Clearing the Club this year? Yes. That's a nice place. Huh? Yeah. It's good, man. Yeah. Nice meeting you, Ethan. You. See you, man. Hope, you find them and get on them. Hope so. Got got today to do it because it's going to rain all day tomorrow. It sure is. Good luck. Thanks, man. See you. Got it. It's a three pounder. Let it go. Probably a four. Okay. Now I just need to find three, four more. Thank you. And they bit the little worm that we made. They bit it good too. Okay, that's catchable. It's a five pounder. Oh my god, don't. Little dudes, little bros. I had to sacrifice a couple out here just to see. Felt like a little one too when it bit. Uh, but at least they bite it. Little ones, dude. Update. Update is not on much. I don't know. Kind of lost my direction a little bit. So I don't know. I mean, I have the sight fish. I can get me through at least one day, maybe two, if I'm somehow lucky. But I doubt it's going to stretch for two days. The amount of people that probably found them. But um, the tree deal. I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm kind of. A little, a little puzzled by it. I don't really know what to do. They're just not biting. And I can see them on the tree. And that's how they were last time. Like, I just had to sit there for 30 minutes on a fish to get it to bite. It's just weird. So, I don't know. I mean, the fishing, the bite could get really good on those trees. But, it might not. So I don't know. Uh, I, I, uh, I mean, based on what I have found right now, if I can catch day one's worth of fish, 21, 22, 23 pounds, maybe bigger, 
do what I can. I mean, I, I, there's enough on the trees that I've got found right now that I think there's a decent bag. If I can get them all to bite, that's, that's not really been the case. So that's it. I'm not sure we're gonna get. Might get washed out tomorrow, but we might not. So if it's not too bad tomorrow. We'll get out here and spend a half a day and see what we can come up with. So. Rain did not happen like they were talking about, so. I'm gonna try some different things. I'm gonna try to win this tournament. We're gonna win this tournament. We gotta do, we gotta keep pushing. Keep pushing. You know, it only takes a few minutes to find winning fish. It's just facts. So, let's go spend some time on the water. Run up the river a little bit. See what that looks like. Go check a couple places. Because at the end of the day, I can find some fishing fish. That's a big deal. On the, his YouTube stuff. So you ate something weird today? Uh, yeah. So, so Frank... So can, can we play a guessing game real quick? Yeah, let's play a guessing game. So Wait. you gotta give us a clue, though. Yeah, we got... I, I, need, I mean, it's, it's I obviously... It's an animal. Wow. <laughs> turtle. And uh, I'll tell you what, the That's animal... My guess. My, the, guess is, my guess is turtle. The animal okay. has fur. My guess is not turtle. Swarm. <laughs> okay? That's your guess. What's yours? Wait, the service three. crew guys? We'll give, we'll give them three guesses. No, uh, no, each, have, each get a guess. Uh, I want, I want a clue. No, is it no, 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 no. It's actually it's raccoon. 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 That's raccoon. where I'm going. But I want to know: is it over or under 20 pounds? I don't know. They kind of range kind of different ran. size. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a raccoon. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, wait. I got it. I know what it is. It's a neutral. Guys, what do you got? You said turtle. <laughs> I was thinking that or a beaver. No, no. You said it fed fur. I'm gonna go with beaver. Okay. Matthew is correct. Beaver. They caught a beaver yeah, and and uh, grilled it no, they and fried it. or fried it, fried it. Oh my gosh! It was gamey, yeah. but it, it tasted good. really good. Wow, dude, that is gross. Apparently, yeah, he caught it on he caught it on Sunday. What do you know? What part of the beaver you ate? Not the tail, because he said the tail was nothing but fat. So trappers back in the day, little fun fact for you, used to eat beaver tail. Uh, to stay alive, to have all the energy to go run their trap lines, because it was straight fat energy. Yeah, it was. Is that I would it's eat like, it again. It's like, uh, it, it, was, it was like beaver rind, like pork rinds, beaver rinds. Yeah. Where in the county the squirrels are the fattest? The fattest. And then so he pre squirrels. He pre hunts. <laughs> he pre hunts, pre -hunts, pre -hunts for the squirrels, squirrels, where he'll kill a couple, weigh them, make sure that they're pre -hunts. still heavy, and then like. Gauge we pre fish he, they pre the squirrel per tree ratio. Oh, there's a science. Too. And then go out and that sounds like something Matt would do. Is there a spawning time for this world? No, I mean, <laughs> but it's literally a bass tournament for squirrels. <laughs> like, like you train them up to like you know like where they six bite. Six years in a row. Lawyer guys? Yeah. Seriously? Yes. Yeah, swear to you. Hmm. No. He had to leave a media event early because he had to go pre-hunt for a squirrel for the squirrel turtle. What does he shoot? Twenty twos? I have no idea. No, dude, shoot him with a shotgun. shotgun. Oh really? Oh yeah. You don't mess. No, we don't mess. East Texas, man. Shoot him with a twelve or twenty gauge. Really? Yeah, fall. Hear it. Got the fox squirrels and hit oh, the ground. Wait, wait. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fox squirrels hit the ground and you can hear it. Boom. All right, guys, I am beat. So I got my boat number, boat one hundred and eighty. One eighty. That's crazy, by the way. And uh, but I think we're ready. You know, uh, again, what a blessing that I was able to win the first one. Because as as hard as I'm gonna fish, as hard as I'm gonna fish this tournament, that man, I, having that pressure of not like I'm sure these guys are freaking out right now, points and all that kind of stuff, trying to make the elites. I don't have that pressure, and that is a blessing right there. So I'm gonna have a lot of fun tomorrow, and uh, I'm just gonna take it, like I said, guys, one fish at a time. Um, I think I'm gonna have a lot of boats around me tomorrow at least where 
one of the first places I'm going to go. It just so happens. I, I just think it's probably been discovered by many, many people. But, um, but you know, maybe there's a few in there that somebody didn't catch. And then if we can just kind of get a little rhythm going, get a few, get lucky, catch a couple that I, that I know about, and then maybe find a few new ones along the way, um, all good, you know? So that's the deal. We've got some trees to go fish, flip some stuff around the trees, which obviously could turn into something really big. So thank you so much. Everyone has been it's so cool. Everyone has been tagging me in all these merch pictures wearing the hoodies, wearing the hats, and tagging us on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, thank you so much for doing all that, guys. It's awesome to have you guys part of the team and representing the brand and uh, and helping support everything. So uh, that is, that's that. I feel like I'm interrogating right now with this light here right now. So that's it. Good night. Love you. And we'll see you day one, day two of the Bassmaster Open here on Santee Cooper. Let's go. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Well, we're back at Santee Cooper here in South Carolina, a great lake by the way. And what we're doing today is we're fishing the Bassmaster Open Southern Division, stop number two. If you're watching the series, you saw how awesome it was that I won stop number one on the Southerns at Lake Okeechobee, my home lake, set the records for the biggest bags ever weighed in and opens and all that good stuff. So that was so cool. And I've qualified for the Bassmasters Classic with that win. So I have to fish the other two tournaments in the division to make sure that I'm qualified because it's just the way the rules are. So uh, I want to win this tournament. I'm going out there to, to try to do as best I can, but we're in the Bassmasters Classic, guys, which is awesome. And that'll be for 2025, by the way. So that being said, spent three days out here practicing we're on a 21 day journey so far we have had back to back now back three tournaments in a row uh i feel good you know i'm actually not tired mentally or physically um uh, ready to go excited about this you know this lake's a little different this year you know i've been here a few times and let me just kind of give you the scenario of what's going on I've had a lot of rain i guess for the last few weeks and the whole lake is really muddy uh, there's very few clear water areas where you can even sight fish this lake's known for sight fishing very few places you can sight fish. Uh, the few places that you can, obviously there's a lot of boats. I'm in one of those areas as well. So we're gonna have a lot of people around us today. You know, I don't expect that I'm gonna be able to catch everything I wanna catch in there today, but I, hopefully I can catch two or three. And then we'll just kind of see where the day takes us. You know, we've got some flipping fish on trees. We've got lots of things going on. I think we gotta catch a big bag though, if we wanna have a chance at making some, uh, some big money on this tournament or hoisting up another trophy, so. But uh, anyway, he's got my partner, and we have an actual co-angler today, which is cool. His name's Keith, right? His name's Keith, and uh, he'll be fishing. So it's a little unlike the Marshalls on the Elite Tour, where they're just kind of watching, hanging out. Keith gets to fish today. So hopefully Keith catches a bunch of big bass today. It's going to be a lot of fun, guys. So thanks y'all for watching, and uh, let's get this thing going. I was a little kid When the voices down deep inside Kept calling my name Couldn't be denied Through the wrong down the road Felt the fire burning in my soul Knew what I had to do Man on the move I was on the loose And I Stepped into the light I'm gonna live I'm gonna fight Like Bye. 
what just happened? Am I is my GPS wrong? I I'm not. lost, bro. <laughs> this can't be the spot. There's so many fish in here on beds right now, it's ridiculous. Oh yeah? Un believable. Unbelievable, dude. I, I don't even know what to say. This just get to work and see what happens. Dude, I can't believe it. I figured there'd be 10 boats in here. Unbelievable. Like seriously, dude, I have no idea what just happened. How can this be? Thank you, Lord. This, this, let me just say thank you, Lord. For, I mean, there will probably be boats coming here, but just thank you. I mean, I expected 10 boats in here right now. Wow. So thank you. Let's just let's just get to work. Another one back here, another about five pounder. There's 25 pounds in here. Yeah. Get in the right spot. It's one cast, dude. Crazy, huh? I'm you. I thrown in there 20 times. I, the, the, I finally saw her throw in there and boom, there she is. What's that? A four? Three and a half? Three and a half? Females like six. Thank you, Lord. Eradication, that's what we're on today. Right on. We're gonna eradicate. We're gonna have some fun doing it. Oh yeah. We need we need 30 today.
That's the big one. That's the big one. Bandito bug. First time I've thrown it. I only throw it when it counts. Hey, how big is that one? Dude, I threw that bandito bug first cast. First cast, bro. Seven. Seven four. Yeah. Basically six, seven. Six, seven. I'll take that all day hey, good long, dude. my brother. Good job, buddy. Male. I think it's a four pounder. I think it's a four pounder. Yeah. Uh, probably a four. That helped me, but my hook fell out. Yeah. Probably four and a half, actually. Or five. That helps me buy like almost a pound. Yep. Okay. She's kind of losing interest in the bed. She was there for a minute, spun around on it a few times with no boyfriend there. I don't know where she's gonna go. She's not gonna go far. She'll sit up in here with with a male tomorrow if I don't catch her today. Another big one. Nice. Let me to help you. Another good one, dude. Let me to help you. All right, hold on, hold on. Got him, dude. Boom. Chatter bait, man. Chatter wagon. <laughs> Three and a half. Oh my God. That was him, dude. That was him. That was cool. That was a hot one, huh? Oh, he ain't coming off. <laughs> he, got, he got them all. Uh, he's not even going to help me, I don't think. Ooh, watch your hand. That'll help the cause. Maybe. That was crazy. I missed him the first time. I seen him. He back in there and he blew up on it. Yep. That's it to four. Okay. 
top water bite. I didn't have my camera on, guys. That was a cool bite. Uh, it's a heavy fish. Hopefully she's four and a half or so. Yeah, four. Four and a half. All right, let's see. The so four six. The four one. And a three. Thirteen. So three thirteen. And there's four and I got a seven. So that's my small one. I'm trying to like see if we can get that male's right in here. Yeah. Alright, so that 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 other one, the one we don't want to catch, is right in there. I just I know I can catch him tomorrow. He's probably a four, four and a half. And the bit but the most important thing is that big one might be on it with him tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know? We need to go experiment on these other I got I got some more ponds that I don't think are as good as this one, but I mean they could be. 100 percent could be. Might be my five. I need a five. That's right, to get it straight. I know, I can try and get it straight. And no bug bites again. Dude, thing's freaking magical. You know what it is too? On a lake like this where everybody throws wacky worms? They don't see that thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Four two four thirteen. Almost five pounds. 413. That's the male. Yeah, that's the male. He's peeing like crazy. gonna help my smallest is what three something four one i think yeah, now four one, yeah because you got rid of that 313 yeah so i got a four one a four eight a four eight a four twelve and a seven yep. that's right that's five fish right yep fun day we caught them on frogs we caught them sight fishing we caught them casting around on top waters it was good it was a good day it's just amazing really and a blessing that i found that spot because i, I don't know where else i could even come close to catching that kind of weight i mean that's a special deal right there for sure i mean we it's just one of those deals you just find something special in practice it was awesome we were both 180 The most stress-free angler in the field, Scott Martin, because he won the Lake Okeechobee Tournament record-setting tournament. But it looks like he's had a fun day out here on Santee Cooper. Three or five in the bag, not three. Five fish worth 25 pounds and four ounces. Scott jumps up to seventh place.
And Scott Martin, your o Okeechobee champion, record setting. And I tell you, it's so much fun over here, you know, getting to hang out with all my buddies too, you know. It's, uh, it's fun, and I tell you, Sandy Cooper, when I saw the schedule on the on the Southern Division, I was like, I, I got to fish it. I mean, it's Okeechobee, Santee, and then Hartwell. So, you know, the Lord blessed me a ton. I, I, I don't have a really a good bunch of areas. I just kind of got lucky and caught them in one general spot. But looking at these weights, that tells me that they're biting everywhere. So if I need to go fishing tomorrow, I think I just got to keep doing what I'm doing and keep growing, probably stumble upon some nice fish because to be in seventh place with 25 pounds, that's pretty amazing. But it's a good start. Good job for you. Really? They don't have a bandito bug. Put a bandito bug on, see what happens. See what happens. See what happens. Like, Throw it out there. Like, Ow! You'll be like, what? I'll it with the bandito bug, the trench the racket girl, the bondo one. Just throw the, throw the bandito. That's he won his first tournament last week. Really? He did. Nice. He was excited. I was excited. Purchase oh, yeah. the drop box. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Well, 25, 4. You know, I'm uh, super happy with that, really. I mean, based on my practice, uh, that was really good. I, th I think, I think there's a potential to do that again in there, maybe, if I can get some of those to bite, and et cetera. So, but the one thing that's amazing is that they're biting everywhere on the lake. Really good. I'm in 10th place with 25 pounds, guys. I mean, that is ridiculous. And I think, like 40, 45th place is still 20 pounds. So it's crazy. So we're just gonna have to see how the boys did, get an idea of what's going on, make an adjustment, and um, you know, try to catch another 25. There's a small chance they may cancel the day three. And if they do that, there's also a chance they may not even extend the tournament. It may just end with two days. And if that happens, um, whoever's in first after tomorrow is gonna win the tournament. So we need to really hammer down tomorrow and have one of these magical 30 pound days. So let's go. So we just had a great dinner at the place called Lake House. Whitney Phillips and her husband Trey that own the Clarendon Club, they, uh, they bought us dinner. So thank you so much for uh, buying us dinner at that great restaurant. It was awesome. And I don't know if I said it, I know I did it in the practice video, but this is the Clarendon Club, guys. This is a really cool place. Santee Cooper is literally right there. Uh, they've got this big, you know, open air barn. And this is where we sit at night, we cook, we hang out, we rig tackle, um, we play games. And then inside, the lodge there is built like the 40s. So it's an older, it's a hunting lodge, right? Uh, during duck season, which they have memberships, by the way, they sell memberships for their duck hunting property as well as their deer hunting, and they have a really good bass fishing lake here on the property as well. People stay in the lodge during duck season and hunting season. Uh, we're here, and they also rent this thing out for uh, weddings and stuff like that. They've got a swimming pool and all this stuff here, but it's a really cool thing. So I'm going to drop a link in the description, uh, Clarendon Club, and guys, just reach out to them. If you got a group of people, you're going to come to Santee Cooper for some fishing. It's a great little spot to stay. So, yeah. Jack them up today. You get another 20. The thing is, they're catching them everywhere, but I got like one area. Me too. You know, it's like I got like two, two and a half. <laughs> I don't know. That's gonna be what it's gonna be. We're gonna get that. It's be overcast. So. It is gonna be overcast today. We've never catch this in one for a while. Not right now, but we'll see. I'll see you out there. Hi, buddy. Uh, see you, man. So when the dust settled, I'm in tenth with 25 pounds which is crazy to me. I mean, we've been here for a couple times. We've been here a couple times when it's been really good, but I think that's probably the best. The thing is, it's like, as good as they caught them, it means they're catching them everywhere. But I also need to keep in mind that I need to stay focused. I think, I'm hopeful, prayerful that there's still another 20-something pound bag, 25, 
potentially could be a bigger bag. I'm hoping a few new fish moved in. And I left enough there that I think I think I can catch a decent bag today. But I think we need some big ones. Big ones. You know, I did see one about eight pounds cruising around there yesterday, so maybe that one set up some more. That's the deal. If we can catch uh, two or three seven pounders or an eight or a nine, come in with like 29 pounds, 32 pounds. Be sweet. It's the same every single time. Butterflies, those, that, that, that anxiousness, that the land of the unknown, the thought of like, you know, enthusiasm and like what you're going to do and you game plan, you know, you game plan your day in your head and you're constantly adding a move or taking a move away. You're adjusting that game plan constantly based on the weather. I mean, many, many times I wake up in the mornings and I'm like, all right, well, the clouds are in a lot more than I thought, or it's more sunny than I thought, or there's less wind or more wind. And you have to make those, it's like a football game, fourth quarter, you know, you're making those finer, final little adjustments there on the play. That's what tournament fishing is about. But when it works, that's the exciting part. It's not the pull of the fish, it's not the jump of the bass. It's that, it's figuring out that game plan, and when you write it out on your in your in your head, and you execute it, and it works, you go, that was awesome. Big sack, man, big sack. Three o'clock, sir. Boat 44. Thanks, Scott. Bad, bro. Oh my gosh. It's a big one, dude. Yes. That's the first fish. That's the first fish. That's how we like Santee Cooper, baby. Bandito bug all up in the junk. <laughs> Dude, how about that? Bro, big old fat one. That's a new fish. That's a different one. Dude, that's like a, okay. What is that, a seven? Seven pounds. Seven pounds. We just need four more seven pounders, baby. We cooking with gas. Oh, that's awesome. We'll put her in there. Just thank you, thank you. Thank you. Hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Just because, just because we started a trend. I love you. I love you. First flip. See that fish? Probably maybe 
There, there's a four pounder right there somewhere. I'm done you. And a two and a half. That fish may have been that female that was on that bed right there when I caught the male yesterday. She set up in here. I just have no way of knowing, but it's just that one's not there now. And I figured it would go somewhere close by, you know. I'm shaking, dude. Look at that. 25 years, I still just shake like a little baby. Yeah, he's there. He's there. He's there. He's there. I see him. I see him. There he is. That's a big one. That's the one I came to catch. And we got a little Christmas surprise, a little bonus. Good. Holy crap, bro. Those were all big bass. Those were all big bass. Yes. Those were all big bass, dude. I thought they were carp. I thought they dude, but there's like there's like there's a 10 pounder in there, dude. There's a 10 pounder in there. Bro, this built a 35 bag today. If you haven't bought them yet, I, I can't help you. I'm sorry. I've tried to tell y'all. I've been trying to tell y'all. I don't even know. If, if you haven't bought one yet, I'm just, just don't even buy them now. Just don't even, just don't even, just, just say I'm not going to do it. Just say I'm just not going to ever, I'm never going to buy that. That's what you got to do. You just got to set yourself up for that. Because if you haven't bought them yet, dude, you're missing out. The best bait on the planet. Dude, I'm so glad I left this fish. Yeah, I left that one over there, which brought the seven in. And then I left these. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could have. I could have caught that fish yesterday, which I thought was about a four. It wouldn't have helped me. At the, at the time, it would help me about like a half a pound. Bait pot works. They get down there, and they look at that bait, and they smell it. And they bite it. This thing was originally developed for... A sonar intensifier but with the fish formula inside it's by far my favorite just for that I use it to see with my sonar but I don't need to see it with my sonar as much as I need the scent you cake it on there like that dude and all that is fuming off and it's pasty and it stays on and and there you go that's they should do a commercial 
with bait pop was just that sound. Don't bomb. Just don't. Just negative. We're doing negative advertising here. Don't just. It, actually, I want it to myself, dude. I'm actually thinking about buying out the patent on it and the whole thing, and then never sell them again. Probably what we're gonna do. Because then I could, I could really, I could probably win the Bassmasters Classic and win every tournament from here on out. <laughs> Put my glasses on. I got four eyes contacts on right now. This water's dark in here. You gotta keep your glasses good and clean. It's hard to see them. You can make out you can make out the light spots in here pretty good. That's what I'm basically looking for. A lot of times I don't see the fish, but I see the light spots. Like there's a light spot right here. I can physically see. Got a real big one there. I'm not going to catch it. I'm going to leave that one there. He looks like about a two and a half. I'd rather him stay there than bring a seven pounder in a little bit. Yeah. Yesterday, it took me a little while before I could see him good because it was cloudy in the morning. But today, got a little bit more sun popping already. Several nice ones yesterday on top water as well. Caught two good ones on a frog and caught a real nice fish on a prop bait. Almost a five pounder. Keeper. Yeah, he's 14. It's a lemon, right? Two pounds. feeling dude had this weird feeling and you know why because he was pulling crazy he was pulling like because it was like it was hooked in a weird spot you know hey dang man 
well, I can't complain because I haven't lost many fish at all. So, I mean, it's just part of the game. But that was a weird one. That's how he had it angled on me and then he started cutting back that way. It was hard to, um, it just ripped the hook out. It wasn't, it wasn't placed right. Mm. sick one but probably three and a half we got to catch everything we can catch today because honestly they might cancel tomorrow and if they do we need to be three nine three three ten okay. three ten Let's just put in three nine though situation in here I mean there's a couple more fish in here but to be honest with you we definitely need them for tomorrow the very least. we need to go find some new stuff we need to run maybe even run to this side of the lake I don't know yet we're gonna play around a little bit over here Oh, I had him. He bit it. He bit it. He bit it. The other one is big too. Okay. Yeah. There's two of them. Four, three, four, two. Four, two. I'll put that one over there with him. This one right here. Crazy, that thing does looks bigger to me. But it's not. That's it, right? Because I got two sixes. Two sixes. A four. I just caught a four. And then that that one. Okay. Green, gotta go. Oh, she bit it, dude. She's big too. Oh my gosh, big one, dude. Real big one. Oh my gosh. Come on, baby. 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 
Bro, bro, I found these yesterday with 10 minutes to go. Oh, boys, we got, we got it going on. We're not leaving this creek. I only spent 10 minutes here yesterday, dude. I only went here and up there to that corner and then I left. That's a heavy one, too. Five ten. Five, ten. Alright, so my other one is this one. This other one right here. Right? There's two fours. Yeah. And then this one, which is three ten. Three twelve. Two, two great days, I'll tell you. I'm, I'm excited, I'm happy. This lake's, this lake's been uh, been a little stingy to me the last couple times we've been here, but this time it's been, it's been good. Today was a blessing for sure. Um, you know, I wanted to try to catch a big, big bag today because in the event they cancel, totally cancel the whole tournament, I mean, you might put yourself in a position to win. It happens. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do tomorrow with the weather. I just know there's going to be a pretty bad case of some wind and rain and storms. 44. It's been a minute. How you been? Make sure you step on some of those rods. Sit in that seat and hold the bag. Watch my phone there. Don't step on my phone. If any of them jump out, dude, we got to jump on them now. You know what to do, right? Yes, sir. That must be the seven. <laughs> Big it. Good deal, man. <laughs> Big it. Yeah, how much would you have screamed to you to caught one that size with it? I don't know. I caught a, a four here, and then I caught almost a five in our neighborhood pond. Really? Yeah. All right, he was in 10th place coming into today. He's also your Lake Okeechobee champion from just a couple of events ago from Clewiston, Florida, Scott Martin. 25-4 yesterday, five in the bag. If they go 27-14, you got it. Looking for 27-14, he's got it by now. 27 pounds and 15 ounces, and Scott Martin moves into the lead. And uh, we said this yesterday, Scott Martin's very comfortable in the St. Croix Bassmaster Open so far. Again, he was your champion at Lake Okeechobee. I'd like, and I'll repeat myself, you just do away with the elites. Let's just stay here at these opens because they're treating you nicely so far. Well, it's been fun. I tell you, you know, it's uh, it's good to hang out with all my old buddies and stuff. And, you know, it's definitely a, a true blessing to be able to win Okeechobee and to be able to fish a little free and not stress out too much about points and just try to make, make the best of it, you know. It would be special to win two in a row. I don't know if that's ever happened, but I tell you, it's, I think my dad won three tournaments in a row back in the day. So, I, you know, I don't, he's got all those records. I can't ever say if anybody did it, Roland did it. <laughs> But uh, I tell you, it was just a lot of fun today. I hope, you know, I hope we get a chance to go fishing tomorrow. Not real sure what to expect. I'm just kind of fishing shallow and sight fishing. So big, bad weather conditions, not real favorable for me. But I may, may have to make some adjustments. But this lake's fishing so good right now. I think you can just, you know, if you make the right decision, you can stumble upon a big bag. All right, well, good job so far. Again, he's your Lake Okeechobee champion, and he's in the lead right here at Santee Cooper. Let's see. Bam! 27. 15 that is that's 28 pounds that's 28 pounds we're leading right now but word on the street is 
the local guy, Kyle Austin, I call him local, he might not be local, but um, I think he just caught another big one from what I heard, so he may take the lead, so to put me in second. Uh, the, the debacle is if the weather is torrentially bad tomorrow, they're going to cancel tomorrow, and they could possibly end the tournament right then. So my goal today was to catch as much as I could to put myself in first place for that reason. If they cancel and don't postpone it till Sunday, then I'm going to finish not in first, most likely. Second, maybe third. Um, you know, I, I can't complain, obviously, so I'm really super happy about that. But if we do get to go, we're going to start a new video, and we will um, go with that. And I don't know where I'm going to fish tomorrow. Well, I know where I'm going to fish, and I have some ideas. Just have to evaluate. And again, it's, it's you just got to game plan the whole thing. I got to look at the the app. I got to see what the wind's going to do. I need to look at, at bass forecast. Check out the wind. Check out all the different things that are going on with that, and make a decision on where is a good protected place to fish tomorrow if they do blast us off. So, good day. A lot of really really good day. We, uh, we just got the final results, and I have slid to fourth place in the tournament with 28 pounds today and 25 yesterday, which is crazy town. They're crushing them. I've been here several times for tournaments. I've never seen weights like this. The guys at the top are just continuing to catch them. I've, if I'm going to win this tournament tomorrow, I'm going to have to catch them. But we made the top 10, currently in fourth. So that's a great event so far. No matter where we finish, great. What do I have left? Not sure yet. I do have some fish left, but I'm just, we hope that some new ones move up. Like this morning, went to catch a four, caught a seven. We have that happen a couple times tomorrow. Boom, we're back in this thing. Um, weather update. Major storms tonight, possible hail and high winds. Tomorrow morning could be the same thing. There is a chance, and we won't know until tomorrow, that the tournament could be canceled. There is a chance the tournament could be postponed to a certain time, like maybe 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock. Or even could be postponed till Sunday. So really, we have no idea what's going to happen. So that being said, we're going to close this video out. We're going to start a whole other video in the morning. Hopefully, we'll get on the water at some point. Or hopefully, we'll go Sunday. I mean, I would actually vote for Sunday. That way, we all get a normal fishing day. Um, but I am going to have to catch them because these guys 100% are going to catch 25 to 30 pounds tomorrow, especially with this weather. A lot of these guys are catching them on moving baits, and that's just good for bad weather. So, yeah, but what a blessing. And I think the takeaway from this whole tournament and practice for me was keeping my head down for three days of practice and finding that one area that had potential. And the blessing in the whole thing, true blessing, is that no one else started there. I just can't believe it. I mean, I just can't believe it. So that was a blessing. So. I'm, that's that, guys. I want to go eat some dinner, go to bed. Thank you all so much for everything. Appreciate everyone, by the way, everyone dropping all those uh, great tags on Instagram with the merch. Thank you so much for doing all that. And if you do pick up a hat or a sweatshirt or a shirt, be sure to tag us and we'll toast you up as well. So that's it. I'm going to bed. I'm tired. Look at my hands. It's like, dude, destroyed. Good morning, y'all. Well, we made the finals. Bassmaster opens Santee Cooper. We get a chance to win another one. If we do pull off something special today, it'll be back to back wins, which I don't know. I, I'll tell you a crazy fact about winning tournaments. It's kind of interesting. I'm very proud of this, by the way. My father has a record. There's lots of records. But he won three Bassmaster tournaments in a row. There's a picture of him that we're going to put up right now. Check this out. He's going to be holding three trophies in a row. I have a chance to win two if I can pull off something special today. I'm sitting in fourth, had 28 pounds yesterday, 25 the first day. These boys are catching them though. The guy that's leading the tournament, Kyle Patrick, he's doing something a little different from the from what I'm hearing on the street, he's doing something a little different, which has got me a little worried. I'm traditionally just sight fishing right now. Can I catch another big bag? Absolutely. Are we gonna be the fish today? I have no idea because that's what's coming right there, guys. See all the red right there? Eight, nine o'clock. 
when you zoom in here on the lake where we are, watch what happens. Watch the red. It couldn't be any worse. Like, uh, and, I, and I've, I've had them, see, I've seen them cancel days due to weather. To me, that that's pretty crazy. I, I have a gut we're not going. So if that's the case, it's in a video and you're watching nothing right now because it didn't happen. Now we'll probably put it in another video as a, you know, this is what happened. So anyways, if you're still watching the other video, we're not fishing today, probably. We're gonna go find out, so let's go. If you're not watching the other video, which you need to go watch, by the way, I've got 28 pounds, and look at my hands, they're like destroyed. Uh, then we're gonna go fishing, and we're gonna get wet, and we're gonna have live cameras on us today, and we're gonna go try to pull off something special. That's right, let's go. situation is it's raining and that weather still is pretty bad we're supposed to have a meeting at 610 so I would imagine with the meeting at 610 we're not gonna blast off at 630 I'm sure it's a delayed start looks like the worst part of the storm is gonna be out of here by eight maybe 8 30 9 o'clock which would maybe put us at a nine o'clock takeoff it's kind of what I'm thinking which you know at this point it's a shortened day for everybody you know, see what happens. Good morning. Am I good? All right, we're going fishing, I'll tell you that much. Uh, so, talking to the National Weather Service, I even talked to Davey a good bit too. The good news is, is uh, it's not as bad, you know. Um, the gusts are down. I mean, I've been looking at charts. I can show you all this if we need to. But we're looking at a southeast wind right now. Uh, 14, and it's going to be shifted to the south southwest about 10 a.m. The one thing about the rain coming through right now is that was what they were worried about originally with severe weather. So that's out the window. There's no thunderstorm warnings or anything right now. However, there's a lot of the, the break in the rain is around Augusta. And on the back side is when there could be some supercell developments, and that are the storms that could have a tornado in it so because of that it may not happen it may be crystal clear the rest of the day but because of that that's going to be 2 33 or after we're going to bring you in at one o'clock okay we'll make sure everybody gets in early all right well <laughs> one o'clock check in sometimes you get curveballs and that's what you call this one so um, yeah you know look I'm, I'm 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 excited about it to be honest with you um, I've got a couple of areas that, that we haven't focused on in that area, same area where, uh, you know, chatterbait fish, you know, there's some, there's some good fishing stuff all around me and with no boats on the water today other than just us, <coughs> this fish should bite. So, you know, we're going to go try to pick up a few that we've got marked. Hopefully they're still there. Hopefully they bite. And then we're uh, going to pick up a chatterbait, a swim jig and uh, go to work. So. We won't be able to see much today until maybe after 10 o'clock. And uh, yeah, that's it. So, hey, look, all we need to do is catch 30, 30, 32, 32 pounds. I think 32 wins today with a short day. It's doable. He was embarrassed. He was embarrassed to talk about this, but he forgot his ring here. No, I didn't. He had to part. Look, it's literally even match. <laughs> I noticed that right when I walked in. That's not going to work. I was like, what kind of ring is that? Dude. This after? Hey, you do, do need to put, tuck in this pocket the right way because you're going to get like a pocket full of water. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're, we're looking out for you, Brandon. I don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm an amateur. I mean, look at I'm 21 years old. Oregon, bro. Hey, hey, good luck to you, Kyle man. Austin. Kyle, good to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. You're cracking them up, dude. That's special to. stuff. To. That's they good. bite when we're done. I'm sure they will bite just fine. I'm hoping that wind ain't going to mess it up. Ah, it'll be all right. Honestly. No thunder to lightning last night. The only thing. But when you, I don't know what you're doing, but I heard you're fishing current fish, so current. current didn't stop. The so south wind is yeah, it would be all right. It's we'll good, see. good thinking though on that man. It's like I was telling, I didn't telling McCoy until like Tuesday, so a lot of people didn't really mess with yeah. it a whole lot this yeah. week. Yeah, it was one of those things I kind of overlooked. I thought about it, but I don't. I've never really done it here. I'm sure you set up on 
you know, the heads of the islands and fish the lean trees and I don't know. Very uh, specific. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. Takes a long time. Right, to know the I little... found a lot of it from striper guiding out here. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's cool. Every once in a while you catch large enough striper fishing. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Every tournament, you know, it's got different characters and different dynamics going on and you know we're all usually a pretty even playing field as far as what we're doing but Kyle Lawson the guy leading I just talked to him and it's like the one time in my life that I've sat in a top 10 blast off and go that dude's gonna win like look I know that I'm gonna I'm gonna give it all today but he's gonna crush him he's been catching his weight and he still sold me he said I pull up on my current spot and catch 25 to 27 pounds by 7 30 in the morning and because then I just go fun fishing the rest of the day. So he's going to stay on that current spot all day. He's liable to catch a mega, mega, mega bag today. And uh, so good for him. But look, hey, he can be beat because if he catches 31, 32 pounds and I catch 35, then I'm going to beat him. So it's just the way it's going to be. But he's going to crush him today. It's going to be fun to watch on Fox Sports. And just for it. Good thing is, we're protected with what we're fishing today. Yeah, a couple there and another creek over, caught a couple more. But the majority of the weights come from here. I had 25, whatever, the first day here. And then I had 25 here again, and then when I left, I called up two more times, getting 28. Hot to trot, bro. Dude, there's a little wolf pack right there, baby. Santee Cooper. She's been good to me this week, dude. Look at that. New fish. Started yesterday off with a new one. That's a five. We just need, we need, we need, we need five like that. To have a chance because them boys are catching them. Five even. That's a five pounder. We're gonna work on a straight today. Bottom needs to be five. We're gonna work on a straight today. We can do five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a winner. Straight wins. That's the way I look at it. It was a little one. We actually, that's actually not a big deal. I'm actually okay with that because I want the male to go in there and keep that female around. Pretty sure that female's still there. Put bait pop on there. Mm -hmm. 
the scent. Yeah. She licked it off that quick. Wow, look at that. It's yeah. gone. It was caked on there, dude. <laughs> she had it in her mouth somehow, like all the way to do it. She took it all off. Like seriously. It was caked on there. It was the most I've ever put ever. Hurry. It was caked on this gone in one cast. <laughs> it landed on her and she just kept I don't know if it was her actually, but I put it on that thick. It's like eating it's like getting a taste of a little French fry. I, that's right. That's a big one, dude. That's a big one. That's a big one. Found a blimp. <laughs> Whoo! Number two. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. I think they're coming in here. These are all new fish, guys. Oh, guys, that's what we need. Dude, how about Good that? Dude. Guys, thank y'all for watching <laughs> this beautiful showdown at Santee Cooper Lakes. Right here in Clarendon County. Doesn't get any better than that right there. Megas, dude. Megas. What just happened? <laughs> that, thing, that thing. Woo. Dude, it looked like you hooked a stomp. I know. Oh gosh, this fish is beautiful too, man. Fresh, just pretty. Seven two. Seven. Put her in. Yeah. Okay, guys. I'm in all honesty. As bass fishermen, we're always promoting something, right? I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell y'all, don't buy these. Don't buy them. Cause it could lead to like strain in muscles. It could lead to like broken ribs. It could lead to broken rods if you don't have good ones. It could lead to broken hearts. Bandito bug. I don't know, man. I don't know. This thing's something, there's something special. The other thing that's special, honestly this thing is super special. That's bait pop on there, guys. You know, they developed this bait pop for, uh, to see your uh, bait a little bit better on sonar but it has fish formula in it and that's what I'm using it for a minute ago he saw it I put it on the first flip in there bit it it works it works really really good this stuff is thick it pastes you have different colors that's like a copper I put it on there which is great for like crawdad style baits look how thick that is when they bite it they hold on to it they eat it good and that scent is just coming off so tip of the day bandito bug and some bait pop Ooh, yes Said 700 over eight pounds or something, or 800 or 1,000 or 20,000. Got another one. That's another one. And number three, maybe. And that's another big one. These bed fishing, they they wow. just like they just keep yeah. coming. <laughs> Woo! They called me the exterminator. <laughs> <laughs> We're eradicating them. <laughs> that's the way you want to do it. I think you they call him the, the landlord. He's evicting them. Yeah. 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 That's it, honestly. <laughs> The reason that bandito book's so good about to start catching up, is that baby. big bulky baits. The bigger fish bite it more often first. Getting Throw a little close. tiny drop shot in there, and little finesse worms and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you're gonna get bit like crazy, but you're gonna catch the males first a lot.
is big one, dude. Oh yeah, big fish, big fish. Oh gosh, no, no, no. Come here, buddy. Yeah! Woo! That is awesome, dude. First cast with the drop shot. I was like, you know what might work? Drop shot. First cast, guys. Look at that. Dude, it fell out. Look, it fell out. <laughs> I knew that was a big one, dude. Yes! That was called an adjustment. We sat on this fish, we sat on it, we sat, that's like a six and a half, seven pounder. I said, dude, it's chasing, I know I can catch this fish. It wouldn't, be, I had it on for a minute. I said, a drop shot. Hmm. I said, maybe first cast, I'd better to bite it. Boom. Yes! Dude! Bruh! It's like, Lake Santee is awesome. You know, my dad grew up here. And he fished us like years and years. And he still hadn't told me at any spots. <laughs> Dude! That's for you, Pops. Little spinning rod action. What just happened? A 6'10, baby. 6'10. <laughs> Let's go! Dude. Let's go, dude. They left at the wrong time, didn't they? Dude. Dude! That is awesome! Man, today's been a good day. Today's gonna be a good day. I tell you, it's, uh, I gotta give a shout out right now to my wife. Because she has been praying. She's been just, just doing awesome. And she's the main, number one, bar none reason I'm able to keep my head on straight. So thank you, honey, for all the support for 20 something years out here. It's tough. I've been on the road for 21 days. Two Bassmaster Elites and then now this one. That's not an easy job at all for any woman, but my wife is special. We've been married 25 years and uh, I love you, so. <sighs> the mail. What I got a two pounder. Two pounder, right? A small one. Sometimes you can catch the male you can catch the female after you catch the male. I've done that plenty of times this week. It's a three nine, hopefully about a pound and a half. Let's just let's just keep it. A 
lot of times she'll bite immediately afterwards. I'm glad I've got five. It's not easy to catch five in that amount of time. I think he's gonna help. Not gonna help me. Not gonna help me. Oh! Got her, dude. Got her, bro. It's not as big as I thought, but it's just gonna help me. It's gonna help me. It's gonna help me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not as big as I thought, that dude. Look at that. Okay. We gotta go. Like this, literally like the last fish. Yeah, four. Four, four. Helps me by a lot, bro. Okay, I got a call real quick. I need to get in here. This one's like three, three ten. 311. Well, three something. Yeah. Three. That's bigger. Okay. Okay. Santi, you've been good to me. Last cast. One giant one, dude. Like an eight. Uh, it was the biggest one. I, I mean, I'm just gonna tell you, it was, it was at least an eight pounder. And I just, I finally gave up on her. <sighs> Scott, they were on the bed, though. Yeah. It's kind of early. They're spawning everywhere. At least where I'm at. I got a magical spot. 
It's just magical. I'm serious. It's magical. If you showed you my GPS, it's a circle around a pocket. It's like not. I mean, it's not like. I mean, it's just a pocket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've gone around and around and around it every day. What was that on the side over there? A houseboat or a pontoon boat pulled up on the bank? I don't know what that was. I had a special shirt on today. Two weeks ago, I was Bass Ninja. And this week, I'm the Bass Exterminator. You see the Bass Ninja shirt? That's me. But we're going to make a new one called the Exterminator. Because that's what I did, some extermination. In those days, we exterminated them, didn't we? Oh, man. <laughs> we he, took catches, them he catches the female, then he catches the male who goes, I'm the exterminator! <laughs> <laughs> Things kind of hard on yourself. I was, I, was, I was like, okay. <laughs> I'd hate to be fishing in a tournament, Jason. I can tell you that. Landon, come here. You got to help me out, buddy. This is bad My phone. I was hoping to be a text. Get another hour. I heard you. <laughs> it's good though. The fly was awesome. It was awesome. A little choppy. Probably my bad on you, wasn't it? Yeah. Good call, dude. No, thank you. I'm just glad everybody's in and it was a cool All fish. Oh, that's cool. I had like an eight or nine. I couldn't get it or bite. I should have stayed on her now. Yeah. But just. I watched it. It was awesome. Looks like the bags are a little bit lighter than, and that's based, based on the time. So I'm happy with what I got. The leader here on day you know, three question is, should I have stayed on that fish or not? I mean, when, when a winner win it, it's the only thing that matters really for me. I probably should have just stayed on that fish. First top 10 just catching a four pounder. Yeah, man. And gain it pound and a half or pound. It cost done. me, but you know, that was an uh, eight or a nine, which I think it was in that caliber. It was an eight for sure. Uh, or giving me five more first, pounds, so, you know, so giving me 30, 30 pounds, 31 pounds, and that, uh, that may have done it. But I could see it. I could see this close, guys. So good tournament no matter where I finish. Hopefully, hopefully a little more than I thought. But we did what we could do. Fun though. Go. He one. is your Lake Okeechobee champion, already qualified for the 2025 Bassmaster Classic out of Clewiston, Florida. Let's get loud for Bassmaster Elite Series angler, Scott Martin. Five in there. He had a special day if you watched it on live. 18-2 to take over the lead. He's got it, 27 pounds even. Three-day total of 80 pounds and three ounces. Let's hear it for Dakota Ebear. It's going to be a great finish for him. He's in second now. Again, a three-day total for Scott Martin of 80 pounds and three ounces. He set the record just a couple of, just about a month ago with over 90 pounds to win at Okeechobee. And here he is with 80 pounds through three days at Santee Cooper. You know, Scott, they were talking about it on live. We'll have to do a little bit of math, but uh, your your daily average for your bags caught in the opens is uh, is pretty solid this year. It's been a it's been a fantastic couple months because we you know, the fork I did pretty good too there a couple days and yeah it's been it's been fun. My hand hasn't healed. It's been the longest I've had that mark on my hand in, in my life. But you know, look, the Lord's blessed me a ton this year already. I had a great event here. You know, couldn't ask for more. Practice was a little tough, but you know, a lot like the, a lot of the guys were saying. You know, it's those little things that you pay attention to in practice that kind of give you an idea, give you a little hope, and then you hone in. And on a lake like this, where you've got stable weather, and fish are coming to you, all you need is just a little bit, and a little bit can go a long way. And I think everybody had their own area. Everybody's around this lake in different places, and fish just kept showing up every single day. So, you know, it was awesome. I caught my fish this week pretty much on one thing, the bandito bug. That's what I caught him in Okeechobee. And I tell you, that thing's magical. I don't, I don't know. They like it this time of the year during the spring. They, they chew it really, really good. And uh, it was awesome. Can't say enough about Lou's. I've been fishing with new Lou rods, P-line, all that stuff is good. I didn't lose any fish this week. Uh, just fish clean. And, and, again, it was just 
I'm probably one fish short. I don't know what it's going to be. I, I, I haven't really looked, but man, you know, Dad spent a lot of time here over the years, and we fished a couple tournaments now here, and I haven't done all that great in those previous ones, but I sure do like it now. Man, I mean, this is awesome. 80 pounds and three ounces. At the beginning of the year, if I told you I'm going to give you a three-day total of 80 pounds and three ounces to pick which one that would be, would you? I mean, we know they're big ones here, but I think you probably would have said Okeechobee. Absolutely. 80 pounds any day of the week is probably going to be real close to winning any tournament ever. And uh, it was just, again, a true blessing, you know, and I just can't thank the fans enough for showing up. Uh, you guys are special. I love hanging out here. Met so many great people. Uh, the Clarendon Club, Whitney Phillips, and the whole Phillips family has been awesome to us this whole week. And the last thing i got to say, a big love you to my wife. You know, she's been holding down the fort for over 20 days, 21 days now, and that's a tough job. Way tougher than what I've been doing. So, honey, I'm heading home here in a minute, so hopefully I get a trophy of some sort, whether it's big or small, and I'm heading south. You get to go home, that is the one guarantee. We don't know where you're going to end up, but I know where you're going right now is in that hot seat. Not today. Let's get loud for Laker Howell as he comes up. 53-12 through his two days. To unseat Scott, you need 26-8. 53-12 through two days, looking for 26-8. 26 pounds, 13 ounces, and he's going to move into first place with a three-day total of 80 pounds and nine ounces. And Laker Howell is now your new leader. Good job, dude. Round of applause for Scott Martin here, Lake Oak Champion. Thank Thanks, Scott. I, I got to say one thing. I fished with his dad as a co-angler, and I tell you what, Randy, I'm really proud of this kid right here. He's got big things going for him. Laker Howell's a real deal. Congratulations. Yeah, he's the real deal. Here we are. Let that sink in. Laker Howell. Look at that place right there. First place on my screen. You want to call it right now? I would love that. I just, y'all go throw your fish back and we'll go to the house. Everybody gets a check, we'll be happy. But I, it, ain't, it can't end like that. I know I'm going to be over here about to throw up for a second. But first thing we got to do is we got to bring him up. This is how we do this on the opens. We bring him up to chat. Let's bring up your day two leader, Kyle Austin, out of Ridgeville, South Carolina. An EQ angler. I think we call this lake home. It's been a special week. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, you know, people say it's in my backyard. I actually live in Ridgeville, South Carolina. I'm closer to uh, Lake Moultrie, that area. Um, but ever since I was a kid, man, I've been in this park a lot, watching Bassmasters weigh in, watching local tournaments weigh in. And then I finally got a shot to uh, fish out here. And, Man, this lake is special. What we like to do is, you know, get a chance to thank everybody because it's about to get crazy on this stage should it go to Lakers. So let's get some thank yous in uh, who you want to recognize. Yeah, I first want to thank my wife, her family, my family, my mom, my dad. He needs 24-11 to unseat Laker. We guys ready? We're ready to crown a champion. He doesn't need just five pounds. He needs a big bag, 24-11. He's got five in the bag. Let's welcome him up out of Ridgeville, South Carolina. It's Kyle Austin. Rolling out in the lead, side by side, guys. It's about time. 24-11 is what you need to take it over. If it's anything lighter, it goes to Laker. He's got it, 27 pounds and eight ounces. And Kyle Austin is going to be your champion here at Santee Cooper. Round of applause for Laker Howell. Going to be a fantastic finish for him. And the second heaviest, unofficially second heaviest three-day total in Bassmaster Open history is going to Kyle Austin with a three-day total of 83 pounds and seven ounces. Sure, man. Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, dude, you got the ninja one, dude. Sweet. Dude, check that out. Oh, my goodness. Hey, he talks about you all the time. Hey, you his inspiration. He actually is uh, high school um, bass. Uh, there you go, dude. That's He's awesome. Can I get a picture real quick, too? Yes. Heck yeah. Thank you. You dude. inspire me so much, man. Oh, I thank, thank you. you. What's so your name? Derek. Nice to meet you, I met bro. you at Lake Murray, and then I had my first tournament there six months later, and I weighed in two fish. Nice. And I did it because you inspired me. So nice, thank you man. So much. You're very welcome, dude. Thank, thank you for supporting the, the ninja. Scott Martin, yet again, he's had a great run so far with the open step right over there, Scott. And he gets to go home, a three-week trip. We're going to give you some gas money, and you get to take home the Garmin contingencies. That's two of them. There you go. Thanks to Garmin. There we go, guys. Got a trophy at least. You know, a uh, lot, lot, to, lot to really be thankful for. Um, finished exactly where I'm supposed to finish in this tournament. 
really thankful that I found what I found. Uh, I had a shot. I literally had a shot. Um, but I tell you, I, as a competitor, I want to win, right? But as a human being and somebody that appreciates what all this means, I'm glad I finished third. And here's why. Austin, Kyle Austin, local guy here, he's getting to go to Bassmasters Classic. Now, if I don't won the tournament today, I don't get an extra Bassmasters Classic. So he gets to go to the Classic, and that's special. That's a special deal. Awesome. He won it here in front of his home crowd and his hometown and his family. That's awesome. I know what that feels like. So I'm glad I didn't win because I would have taken that Classic opportunity away from him. Second place would have been great, but i tell you what. Laker Howell, young man, Randy Howell's son. It's his best finish he's ever had to finish second in a Bassmaster. That means a lot to him, and that's special. Money comes and goes. I mean, I could have made a little extra money. Big deal. Big deal. That comes and goes. These trophies, that's going to mean a lot to him. It's going to mean a lot to Laker. It's going to mean a lot to Kyle making the classic. So I'm, I'm super happy that I finished third, and I'm exactly – where I'm supposed to finish. So that's that's all I have to say about that. So good job, guys. Um, another huge shout out to Guggen Bates, Bandito Bug. All kidding aside, guys, I think catches them. Straight catches them. Yeah, you know, my lose rods have been great. Um, the actions are so spot on. I'm, I'm not losing fish this year. Um, it's just been fantastic. And I uh, can't say enough good things about the, the, the rods. The reels are just great. My equipment plays a big part in this. P-line didn't break my line on any fish, truck or hooks. You know, we had we had a lot of big fish the last couple tournaments on, and I haven't lost any of them, and that's a big deal. So uh, we're going to head back to Clewiston. I've been on the road for 22 days. My wife is ready for me to be home. I'm ready to be see my family, and I appreciate you guys watching our videos. And if you get a chance, check out the merch link. We are going to have a new shirt up. Uh, we haven't come up with a design yet, but we'll have a new one here coming your way. And uh, appreciate all the support again. We're gone. We're out of here. We're heading south, guys. We're going to do a little bam the proper way. Bam!